Look at all those channel points. Rah. Um. All right, Waffle. This is your game. Which one is the story mode? Let's see how it. Maybe local? Oh, there it is. Never mind. All right. So tonight is a different night. We've been donated a game and used channel points to beat me into submission. <laughs> and we're going to try to story mode. Already, I have a weird Mega Man feeling. Now you have option to... Option for fight. Yeah, it's definitely a different one. Alright, here, hold on now. Ooh. There we go. Uh, pick one and see what happens. Alright, I'm just trying to think who I want to pick. Mm. Going to treetop. Start. Hey, it even knows what kind of controller I'm using. I've seen the a the Xbox, eh? I want a few stored. Craig. Craig's life is slow and medium. His people and where wall builders devote their entire lives to maintaining a great rock wall. They alone wield the power to manipulate great masses of stone. Most wall builders are born on the wall and will circle the whole Aetherian forest three times during their lifetime, never setting foot on the ground below. Well, that sounds kind of miserable. Cray! You're a setup. Okay, hold on now, hold on now. Craig is considered one of the more beginner friendly characters. Is he? I didn't even get to pick a character. But a word story, I'm assuming that's just who you use. Okay, so A is attack. X is special. Y is jump. Why is Y? So attack strong. Oh lord. I'm always facing the wrong way. On fire. He's on fire. Ah. What the hell? Did. I didn't know it was going to save my ass, though. One day, Craig comes to a huge breach in the northern wall. He has never seen such destruction, and fears the threat that might have entered the forest. It was me! Listen now. No! Wait, I didn't even get a chance to... Oh, 
Cool kidoki. Craig begins the laborious process of summoning rocks to repair the wonderful or wounded wall. He must heal it quickly to protect the precious Therian forest from outside threats. Suddenly, the unthinkable happens. Craig, Craig is attacked from inside the wall. Oh! Oh my! Wow, damn, Batman. Fighting a bird. Craig's rock band mind. Barely process what he sees. The Great Wall was made to protect the tree treetop dwellers. Now one of them is mounting an attack from within. He's a bird, he could have just flew over it. I get a fancy award for that one. Outraged, Craig steps off the wall for the first time in his life to confront the treetop trader. Maple. Vigilant. Maple? Vigilant. Of the forest. Meanwhile, bystanders gather. Treetop dwellers only see Craig trespassing on the forest floor to attack one of their own. Outraged, they vow to retaliate <laughs> retaliate in the former allies of on their former allies, the Woba. Really? They're gonna retaliate on him? Open your eyes! Shit, I forgot how to do that. And I screwed up.
This one's a dick. I kind of rolled off too. Craig's amazement. The purple treetop dwellers vanished. Mayhap younger sister of Maple approaches and drops a letter to the forest floor. Sure. The letter explains that the Shadow Warrior couldn't have been the real Mabel because she left moons ago to find the source of the strange purple disease in the forest. Craig realizes the only way to protect his beloved wall and forest is to leave them. Mayreed sends Lil Lily with Craig to help find track down Mabel in the middle of her quest. Awesome possum. <laughs> oh, Billy. All right, hold on here. Uh -huh. Rapster the Bradshaw. The dude, dude. The way they got the music set up, and the characters, and the way they announce everything, you'd think these people watched a little too much Dragon Ball. <laughs> Raster the Bradshaw, are in top wingman in the Air Armade, or Armada, an elite aerial military in the ranges above a whole Aetherian continent. The Air Armada pillages merchant transporters and harasses sun. Guarded fire, Emperor or er, Emperor outpost, Rasser alone. The Amarda flyers is known to break rank for personal glory. Rastar is brilliant and put unpredictable flyer. Bradshaw is continuous, but steady. I can't do that anymore. They have left the best friends, unlike unlikely part or. Er, They've been the best of friends and unlikely partners since the days in their air academy. There is too much thing, too much Dragon Ball. They've proven that many times over. Wait, I have no idea what that just did. Made me feel like I was on ice. <laughs> I 
These games make me a nervous wreck because I always feel like I'm gonna run off the side, and half the time I do. So this guy doesn't have... Car jumps like the other guy. Like I'm literally just chipping him away. The other guy you could do your hard move and charge it up. <laughs> oh. That's gonna make it more complicated. Ah! This one's gonna be harder just because you have to use it in the air. <laughs> when soaring above the Ethereum forest, on a routine scouting mission, Rath spotted the destroyed section of the rock wall. Master swoops in to investigate while Bradshaw follows. Two friends... Period. Or... Perrowed it. Perrow it? Yeah. They did the thing. In the air, showing off for each other. Fly in fast and reckless. Oh, 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 shit. I keep making the mistake of pushing the D-pad. Holy Lord, stunning Jesus. Ah! Oh my god, I can't use this stupid bird! Meanwhile, on the wall below, Craig, a wild builder, has just returned from a confrontation in the forest floor. He anxiously repairs the wall, impatiently calling up the stone. When Craig sees the raster and Bradshaw diving towards the wall, he braces for attack. Assuming that the air armada is taking advantage of the weakness in, the, in his wall, Craig pulls up a rock and hurls towards, <laughs> hurls it towards, or upwards, smashing Bradshaw out of the sky. Oh, Wait, why am I fighting the lion? Ah! I get you son of a bitch. Wanna be cheap? I'll be cheap.
You rot. I can barely get up there with the little I do know. And he's like back flipping and all that shit. Butt shiggles. I don't know, Waffle. But I'm kind of wondering how that would work where they kind of dedicate the story. Maybe the online part can be done. I'm willing to take a look after I'm done Birdman. Intense force of the well builder's projectile propels Bradshaw into the unyielding rock wall, rendering an aerial ace unconscious. And you. Holy shit! That was a bad idea to test that. Super low jump kind of deal. Just to be able to. Ah! He teleports! Wingman in peril, Raster erupts into blind fury, reaching in rage. He wheels in midair and launches himself for the uh, rocket, at, or launches himself for the rock creature. Aww. <laughs> now I'm gonna Hadouken you for ten hours. <laughs> Oh my god, I was joking. He <laughs> dragon punches a lot. <laughs>
Come on. Was that? I didn't do that. The clap. He parried you. Oh, great. So you can parry. Victorious against the wall builder, Raster carefully picks up his injured friend and carries him back to the air armada. Rastar is ridden with guilt for allowing his reckless bravado to endanger his devoted brother in arms. He swears to find Crag and seek revenge. Meanwhile below, Crag picks himself up quickly, repairs the wall. Mysteriously, the well builder sets off east, accompanied by a small Aetherian companion by. Hello, nobody. Check Waffle. My region. My region is Canada. Why can't I pick Canada? I'm not American. What's my region then? I don't even know what WC stands for. Or EC. Or MW. Alright, MW. No, I was not. No! I was trying to see if we could do the story mode thing where that co op thing said. WC is Wisconsin. Oh. That sounds horrible. Friendly match, stats and options. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, so it's only co-op offline there, Waffle. 
in the story mode anyway. Well, that's was that was cutting the people. What? It's W I. W I what? All right, I need, what do I need? Where am I grabbing? Ah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's a blowfish. Or thing. Actually, I can't tell anymore. And it's just a really fat goldfish. Board members of the board. Wait, what? Something just pop up. Hmm. Yeah, the story mode is not online, sadly. You literally have to be... It's coach co-op. You can sit in the same room as the person. They have another controller, they can do their thing. Kinda sucks, they should have online. Well, for that part anyway, now it's just online beat em up, I guess. Board members at the Water Trading Company are furious that the Air Armada has destroyed their flagship and constantly pillaged their trade routes. They hatch a plan to infiltrate the Air Armada and bring it down once and for all. However, there's only one creature in Merchant Port that can breach the Armada's defense, Orkin. An exclusive trickster, or an elusive trickster. Orkin steals from the WTC and gives to the underpaid company workers. So, it's like a weird version of Robin Hood. However, the chairman announces that they will bargain with the notorious thief. I gotta stop using the D-pad. German knows Orkin's fondness for the poor fisherman Nesbitt and his granddaughter. Nesbitt's low wages are barely enough to put food on the table. The chairman appears at the docks and offers a feast for Orkin's, for Orkin's adopted family. However, in exchange, the family must convince Orkin to do the bidding of the WTC. But the savvy Nesbitt bargains for more, a yearly feast for all the workers in, of Merchant Port. One day of holding each week representation at WTC board meetings. Chair, the chairman frowns. It is a steep bargain, but he is forced to agree. Remember his paddles? Or puddles? Yeah, I... I 
You can also use the puddles to strengthen smash attacks. Yeah! Seriously? The whole not being able to jump for half from half of their attacks kind of throws me through a loophole. Nisbet's granddaughter is the only one who can convey the plan to work. The water creature agrees. He will do anything to help his adoptive family. Using his mysterious water powers, sneak into the armada through the underground sink. <laughs> Morgan sniffs his way through the airship, seeking the WTC's stolen goods. Suddenly, Orkin happens upon a strange scene. He spies the air armada's commander selling the chairman's goods worth millions in exchange for a single scroll. This is no ordinary scroll. It's a shimmering, shifting map illustrating weak points in the defiance or defense of every civilian or civilization across the surface of Aether. <laughs> nutty nutty Kool-Aid man. Dude, that whole knock out of the thing when you, like, stuns every little thing you can do. It's on my nerves! Come on!
And this is why I like the, the PlayStation All-Stars against oh, more than Smash Brothers. Eight ring outs. Not a fun of Smash Brothers to begin with, but... Get off my waterfront! Yeah, that's because fanboys got hurt that Sony didn't use all the right characters. And Nintendo fanboys are like, you can't touch my Smash Brothers! It goes poopy in the night! But for the people who actually sat down and played it, I mean, it's still the kind of game I'm not into, but as far as I'm concerned, it was better. Mind you, both games should have different modes of play. Well, dude, I'd rather play Street Fighter 12 than all of those games, but yeah. <laughs> we ain't there yet. Oh, wait, hold on. You know, let me count something. There was Street Fighter 1. There was three versions. What was it? No, Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Super Street Fighter... Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Street Fighter 3... Street Fighter 3 Second Impact. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Street Fighter 4... Super Street Fighter 4... Or, or, or Street Fighter 4 Arcade. Street Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade. Something. And Street Fighter 5. And there was like three versions of Street Fighter V. I think there were 15. If you count all the different versions of each Street Fighter, I think there were like 15. And, I, and I'm not including the EX games. But he said, Frosty, it, it's a little weird. It's a Smash clone, but it's a little more entertaining than Smash, at least. Distracted by his new fan, and it, it kind of reminds me. The menus kind of remind me of a cross between Mega Man. Oh, Street Fighter versus Tekken. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, there were a few spin-offs, weren't they? Distracted by this newfound intrigue, Orkin is startled by the appearance of Rastar and Bradshaw. The two Armada wingmen are armed are amazed to find a water dweller inside the Armada. Rastar Ever the Hothead shoves his wingman to the side and challenges the water creature to close quarters combat. Oh well isn't he special? So the The story works like, or no, the, the menus are like Mega Man. The uh, story reminds me of Dragon Ball. And the game is like a pixelated Smash style game. But, it's actually a little harder than Smash, to be honest. Ah! Yeah. 
No! Why did you not teleport to that stupid hole, you dumb whale? Because you can't just press buttons in this game. I thought that's what I was doing. Lorcan defeats Rastar. When he leaps out of the air, Armada's ship. The chairman's goods in tow. He returns to his... He returns with his loot to the merchant port, only to find his beloved docks in flames. He quickly sweeps Nesbitt's granddaughter to safety and puts, the flame, or puts out the flames. He learns that the merchant port was attacked by a mad fire general on a senseless rampage. Orkin sniffs out the trail of the fire creature and follows it west, leaving his home and in the water once again. He's only half dumb whale. <laughs> oh, here's my Mega Man menu. But instead of this is the one you click to fight this guy, this is the one you click to become that guy and fight five fights or six fights or no, what's five fights? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm eating 3D Doritos because they're 3D, man. Once you've cleared all the fights, take all six fights into a fight against the boss. So there's a Wily fight, is there? Well, I'm halfway through the characters. I did the first three. And it may get harder, it may not. Um, 50 minutes into the stream? That's not too bad. His name, why couldn't they have named him something else? He must be Canadian. He's Maple. <laughs> Self-appointed guardian of the Ethereum forest and daughter of the treetop. Okay, it's a girl. Daughter of the treetops protects the treetops lo tree lodges and the floor below her below with her companion plant lily. Hey, Deku. High in the canopy, the treetop dwellers look down on the lowly denzines uh, of the forest floor. The, ma <laughs> the maple knows the forest is one. They will thrive or perish together. And now maple. <laughs> I, dude, I can't read his name with a straight face. I just can't do it. Feels the disturbance through the roots of the forest. But he's a special guy. There's a... Or a girl, I guess. There's a sickness under the ground. I'm telling you. Like, you can read that story in Dragon Ball voice, and it makes more sense. I threw nuts at him! <laughs> Soon discovered, Maple and Lily soon discovered that the forest is infested with mysterious purple shadow. Whenever this shadow touches the plants, it turns twisted and ugly. See, it works. Ah! No! 
I can't do that stupid jump! Oh shit. Throw nuts at him. <laughs> no. Dude, I don't know why everybody, e even in that dumb Smash Brothers game, everybody can fucking jump out of the holes without trying. And I can never get it to work. Like, ah. Uh... Break off, fire turd. Yeah, and they kind of got it in this game, but it's not this. It doesn't work as easy, that's for sure. Work of the uh, the sword. Words of the sickness seems to lie beyond the rock wall. He realizes, or she realizes, that she must go. She leaves Lily in the care of her younger sister, May Reed. <laughs> Gave her a letter that details all of the discoveries about the purple rot and its source. She tells her sister to share the letter with any forest dwellers who will read it. The sister worries that her sister is too reckless. I don't want to say the name anymore. <laughs> and begs her to stay. Both sisters feel the danger lurking beneath the roots. All of the, all of Aether could be in peril. Yeah, they they kind of do in this. I just, it seems, like I said, even in Smash, it never works for me. Like I can do it when I'm in the ring, but as soon as I'm going outside the ring, it's like you can't do that anymore. I don't know. Hit him with nuts. Actually, this one doesn't seem to have one that... He has a double jump, but he doesn't seem to have one that makes him go floaty or... Like the rock guy that I'm fighting had one that he could make a rock pillar come up from anywhere in the ground. Crosses the continent, scouting and searching the following thickness within the earth. With each day away from the forest, she feels herself growing weaker. 
moons and moon, moons into her journey she comes upon an, an enclave under the siege when she creeps closer to investigate she discovers the fire guard attacking the smoke clan's hideout Weedly. You mean the one that launches them? Uh, to throw a seed, you just stand still and hit X. You push no direction and push X on the Xbox controller. I did, it just makes you twirl, but it doesn't make you go up. Suddenly, Boris Burn appears in a whirlwind of smoke. Seeing his adopted home under attack, he mistakes Maple for one of the assailants. In the same moment, Maple witnesses Forburn's smoky sorcery and presumes that he was in him to be in league with the twisted shadows infecting the forest. They both leap into attack. Not a bad character, just bad at floating up. <laughs> Ah! And a horrible name, though. Ah! Stop hitting me! I got my lives back because I had to continue anyway. Okay, he didn't do that before. Ah! They have an invincible period, which is kind of weird. Did you see that? 
What the shit? Like, I can't even get up from a normal attack. And he just kung fu'd his way all... <laughs> Oh, of course, they're shaking hands now. Maple demands to know what role Forsburn plays in the shadow si shadowy sickness. Taken aback, Forsburn explains to his own encounter with the mysterious purple shadow and disperses the disappearance of his brother. Maple and Forsburn conclude that the danger lies to the west. They set off together to find the source of the strange menace to a seer. Notice all the enemies seem to have unlimited jumps. Yeah, I noticed that too. Okay, hold on a second here. Da, da, da. Wait, there's two fire creatures? Oh, wait a minute. I'll take their word for it. Orsbin returns home from a diplomatic mission to find his father. That does not sound like a... Oh, wait. Find his father, Emperor Penburn Slain. A knife identical to the forest burn's dagger is buried deep in the Emperor's chest. Emperor Runburn's loyal spy and intelligent son, Forsburn, has long dis distrusted his father's fire council. Now, all too late, he discovers their treacherous goal. Forsburn flees to the scene and seeks refuge in the maze of Attic. Now, aqueducts underneath the fire cap. I think they said one is a smoke creature. Ah. Uh... This guy has one that flies all over the place. Mmm. -hmm. Does my focus on the fire element? Also fire, but focuses on smoke. Yay! Suspected of murder, Forsburn seeks to warn his beloved royal brother and prevent the Fire Council from seizing the Imperial Throne. But when Zetaburn returns to the Fire Capital, he doubts Forsburn's conspiracy theories. The, brother, the brothers fight, and Forsburn flees wounded and betrayed. Zetaburn convinced his brother, convinced his brother is guilty of Patricide or patricide is devastated. Tells no one of their con their clint clandestine uh, whatever altercation of or altercation or of Forsburn's escape. <laughs> oh no, Walter. Ooh. I still don't get what the smoke does. I can make a lot of it.
But you can make the copies without the smoke. Woodburn flees to the far outskirts of the Fire Empire. One night, seeking refuge in the border of the wastelands, he awakens to find himself surrounded by a murky strangers. They emerge from a ring of smoke and identify themselves as sentries from the Smoke Clan. They seize the wandering fire citizen and bring him to their settlement. They seized me, but I'm in a fight with them. <laughs> sure. Cool. Shit! That was, uh... Those random attacks where they can just kind of, like... Doesn't matter how high you are or low you are on the percentage thing. And they can just whoop you. Ah! Matter, I can't get up anyway. Clan <laughs> chief of Smoke Clan learns of. Forsburn's plight and his skill in the espionage. Er, yeah, that's what it said. She offers him a home in the hidden smoke enclave in exchange for his allegiance. Forsburn vows his loyalty, he renounces the false light of the fire vows to learn the truthful deception of smoke. Her deceptions of smoke. He is given a gray cloak of sorcery and a new identity. We all know the computer cheats. Yes, they do. That shit out. Dude just fucking zoomed back on the map. Yeah, ain't it? Only if we could do that. <laughs> Before long, Forsburn hears news from the fire capital. Zeta Burn has disappeared. Despite his loyalty to the Smoke Clan, Forsburn decides he must find his brother. Donning a battle mask from the Smoke Clan, Forsburn uses a smoke portal to return to the fire capital. When he arrives, however, he is greeted by a familiar figure. A purple kitty! <laughs> I just realized my percentage is already up, like, I must have started with what I left. 
I didn't clue into that before. No! First time in the entire game! <laughs> oh, and it didn't help. <laughs> said purple kitty but I heard something else. I'm sure you did I ain't worried about the fires he leaves them bitch fires Ain't no good. <laughs> hey, which one's me? Oh. New game flipping Firefox. The browser might hear you, Waffle. The browser, as Forsburn used his new powers of smoke to defeat his brother, Zeta Burn vanishes. Fire capital pulses in purple shadow. Then Forsburn sees a blazing in the di in the distance. The fiery army has attacked the smoke hideout while the skirmish was in the fire capital. Forsburn races back to his new home without, without finding his real brother or confronting the false emperor Lox Loxodont. Boop a doom. All right. Muscles! Set a burn and his loyal legion return to the fire capital. They're vanquishing the air armada ships that preyed upon the fire emperor's fur-flung trade routes. However, their triumph returns is met 
not by laurels, laurels of celebration, but by black banners in, in dirges. The fire capital is deep in mourning. Oh. Oh yeah, cause funeral. Yeah. Kings. Kings. Fire, you sma smash tags do a lot more damage. Oh, so that a burn discovers that his father, the Emperor Reburn or Renburn, has been assassinated with a famous dagger belonging to an inconceivable suspect. Or is burn said a burn's beloved brother. Meanwhile, Minister of the Trade. Loxodont is to be crowned the new emperor. Fire Council convinces a, dis a distraught Zetaburn that this was his father's wish. Zetaburn, er, yeah, Zetaburn, a loyal citizen of the fire, accepts the council's will. He pledges his loyalty to the emperor Loxodont and vows revenge upon the traitorous Forsburn. Sure he does. He's like roar, Lion King, bitches. Run, kitty, run! At night, Forsburns materialized in Zeta Burns' imperial chambers. Forsburn pleads for his brother's aid and accused accused the council of murdering their father. Certain of Forsburn's guilt, Zeta Burn flies into rage and attacking his once beloved brother. Forsburn barely managed to managed to escape with his life. You know the one thing, and I, I'm not trying to nitpick the story of a game. I'm really not. But the one thing that they could have went by is, yeah, he used a very special dagger that was given to his brother. But why does his brother still have the dagger if it's in his father? <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, I know, but what I'm what I'm getting at is this happens in a lot of games. It's not just this game. It's pretty much a lot of games. Coronation Day dawns. The citizens present Loxodon with the Flame Imperium. Sacred Torch granted granting the rule of fire. Instead of burn watches exhausted and doubtful. Suddenly a water creature appears and steals the flame. It is the elusive orc Orkin. 
Morgan leaps with the flame into the mysterious purple puddle and is gone. You're like, don't let him touch that shit. Oh yeah, wait, that's right, I forgot. I keep, I, I finally figured out the, in the last, or the last character, why I keep getting one-shotted sometimes at the beginning of a match. And it's because your percentage doesn't restart when you go to another fight. Which freaks me out a little bit. Fire Council orders Zetaburn to retrieve the flame. Ever loyal, the Fire General unleashes a maelstorm of merchant on Merchant Port, the home of Orkin. Zetaburn rampages through the unprepared city until he reaches the docks, where he finds a purple Orkin guarding the ceremonial torch. You know, my young player is going to want to play this. So thanks, Waffle. Another reason for me to lose my PC. <laughs> He's at his grandmother's tonight. Come on.
He bubbled me. There's the Switch version, but it has no workshop mods. Oh, okay. I didn't know there was a console version. Suddenly, the ore can dissipate. Dissipates. The water creature was a mere shadow. Beset with doubt, his in instincts ablaze, Zetterberg's eyes, full of purple gl glow and plums, smoke on the western horizon. This game debuted on Xbox. Well, that that's just weird. Are we ready for the boss fight? Who knows? Our journeys have led to the same place, where verdant grasslands once grew around the Gede. Got I? Delta? God I. Dude, I wonder what that is. Is it God I or Good A? Good E. Good E! <laughs> anyway, a vast creature now churns with, a new, with new seas. Volcanic ash clogs the air. Maple and Forsburn arrive to, the f to find Zetaburn already at the water's edge. The proud lion averts his eyes from his brother wrong. Orkin arrives soon after. Craig appears next, reuniting Maple with her companion plant Lily. Rastor arrives just moments later, having tracked down Craig to take revenge for Bradshaw's injury. You imagine it either be go die or go day. Yeah, it could be. I, I, I just... Eh. Because it does sound like a word that doesn't quite sound like it's spelled. Yes, I'm the one to talk for that matter. Suddenly the earth shivers and the water sheaths or yeah, she seethes with oil strands of shadow. The sea pulses purple, and the vast stone edify, edifies Ares, or arises from the depths of raging whirlpool. It must be the Kool-Aid Man! This strangely ancient stone structure seems to be the gateway. Through this portal, the, re the reveal warrior's glimpses a glimpse of vast abyss that plunges deep below the surface of a theater. This must be the source of Maypole's underground rot. Ferial shadows imposters. Uh, our warriors put their rivalries aside. They know what they must do. No, they don't. They have no clue. Look! Eyeballs! Go figure, I have to hit them. Oh shit! No! Look, this one's got pink eye.
Oh shit. I already forgot how to use him. I don't even know if I'm doing this right. Like, do I just keep attacking the, the eyes? Is there a trick to it or what? Uh, I'm already late, so you all good night. Have a good night, Heaven. Sorry, I missed your thing. I'm getting my butt kicked. Shadow creatures have, have been vanquished. The newly united warriors forget their past rivalries, choosing instead to consider each of the allies against any future threat to Ether. Mystery of the Shadows remains. What were the true what were their true goals? Why did they incite such strife among the citizens of Ath Aether? And will they return? Hey, Waffles! I did it! <laughs> what 
What do you mean, yeesh? Now you unlock Abyss mode? What? What's Abyss mode? Damn it, I didn't... Come on. It is an indie game. I didn't expect the story to be very long. Ah! Hold on! Oh, so there's actual other characters in the six that were in it. The end? Question mark. Wait, what? Oh, shit! What's going on here? Unless you should have all six DLC fighters survival map. Oh, oh no. Well, I'll give survival at least a shot here. Uh. Wait, what? I, I mean, I'm not good at them, 
but I don't like survival modes. This feels more like an actual beat em up. Plus, we'll be adding four workshop characters at some point. So apparently, Deku's brother Ice Bear has this game. means we probably could have another member if we do play against each other. Mind you, where the story's over already, I'd probably some of that tonight. Honestly. Whoa! Get out of here, fish stick. Or I could call him deep fried fishy. Or maybe I sh maybe tonight I should just check out that that mode you told me about the workstation where the story mode's done. Since I got some time. Up with that stupid fly! Okay, uh... You would have to go to... Rival's Steam page. Be able to subscribe to any... What? Subscribe to character? What are you talking about? That workstation was just a, a mode that you went into in this game to build shit. Or make maybe, I don't know, maps or... Ah, shit, I made it to wave 11. Ah. So, I got a busy endless, a busy versus, a busy letterboard. Practice. Heather? Play a hotly anticipated sports game, Rivals of Tether. Tell you what, I have to go. If you have any questions, I'll answer them tomorrow. It's not gonna do me no good tonight. <laughs> 
But yeah, maybe I'll just make this a short one. Developers are jokesters. Oh. Game profile, friendly mode, steps, and options. Extras, replay, set, test, Steam Workshop. Custom colors, my stats, title screen. Oh, Billy! Tetherball? Is that the one where the ball's on a, like a, a rope? Or at a pole? And you just kind of bat it. Or, well, almost like a racket. I, I, I don't know. I've played a lot of different games. I've seen one where it has a small ball on it that you hit it with a racket. And then I've seen one where it had like a big almost volleyball on it that you kind of like hit. All right, so I did the story mode to this tonight. Tomorrow night, I'm going to do a stream where I play multiplayer, and it's going to be versus Waffle, and anyone, if they have this, they can jump in, if they do. Um, uh, well, I know Ice Bear said he had it. So I'm ho hopefully he'll join in, and I'll I'll leave an open thing on the yeah. But yeah, no no I, yeah, Frosty. I'm probably gonna end early tonight where I did the story, and Waffles gotta go anyway. So he, I'll, I'll have him in for the beginning of tomorrow's. It's actually kind of a good thing because I've had a really long day. I've been out kind of. I I've been holiday shopping today in the city and it's horrible like the covid rules are out the window in holiday shopping apparently to some people so i'm just i'm just gonna loaf after after this <laughs> i may actually look at the creation thing here for a bit but who knows so have a good night i'll be back with this again tomorrow for some multiplayer and then we'll see what goes from there. Later!